All right, uh, so now we're going to have a look at uh, some uh, tools uh, of statistics that we can use now to, to analyze uh, um, our turbulent flows. The first obvious one is uh, to, to use a time average rather than um, uh, the, the, uh, instantaneous values. So if you have a value of u, which is a function of time, um, so the, the first thing that we can do, we can introduce a time average. We're using here the notation of uh, Stephen Pope from our textbook. So the mean value of u is then the integral from 0 to delta t, a time span, u of t dt, and then 1 over delta t to normalize that. So that's uh, the obvious way. So for example, uh, the, the, our, um, if we now take the example of our turbulent pipe flow, so this one is, yeah, one, this one's over u. For the laminar part flow, remember you had a parabolic flow field. If you now time average everything, you would get a flow field that more, more looks like this. It's a bit more round shapes over there. <clears throat> so, and that uh, gives you already quite a bit of information on uh, the, the flow fields, and, uh, uh, and it's actually something that is used quite, quite frequently. Okay, so now we have something about the mean flow field. You also want to know something about the fluctuation itself. So the fluctuation, um, so how does it uh, change? So the first, uh, one of the things that Reynolds has introduced is the Reynolds decomposition. which is our value u as a function of t, and then going to be chain, uh, split up into the mean value, which is independent of t, plus the fluctuating part lowercase, which is then a function of t. So I have now split up my original signal into a mean value and the fluctuating part. So if I go back to the example that we had, this one is function of time, this one is u, now let's say our value changes something like this. Then you can take a mean value, which would be in this case somewhere over here, which is independent of time. So this one would be this part. And all of these values over here, the changing part, this one would be then u of t. So this one would be still a function of time. You're just subtracting the mean value. Now we would like to know a little bit more statistical. How much does that oscillate? And uh, I want to give you now an, another simple example, that of a sine function. So you have here pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Then your function would be looking something like this. <clears throat> so the mean value. Okay, so if u is sine of t, for example, the mean value of that would be obviously zero. But uh, since the value is not zero, you would like to know something about the amplitude. And the amplitude in this case would be one. Um, what can you say about the amplitude? So in this case, you have just one single amplitude, but now assume that it's going up and down a little bit more stochastically randomly. You can say something about the maximum amplitude, but it doesn't uh, really tell you something much about it because uh, some spikes might be very large, but it does not mean that uh, you have uh, many fluctuations in it. So, if you want to do something about the, the number of fluctuations, what you can do is the so-called root mean square value. So, 
So, um, if you, for example, now calculate just u of t, taking a time average of the lowercase, of the lots of fluctuation is going to be zero as well, because you have as many fluctuation in the plus part, in, in the upper part, than in the lower part. So what you do instead, you do first the square of the u, the, the, the fluctuating part, So if you do a square, essentially what you get is something like this. Sorry. So this one is u square. Um, if the value, for example, here is going to be uh, even larger than, you see uh, the, the, the footage are going to be even larger than that. So, the, um, essentially what you do, you're flipping over the, the function, <coughs> over into the positive. So you would be able to take an average of this one already. So it gives you something about the amplitude of the fluctuation, essentially. But uh, it's going to give you just an amplitude of the square of the fluctuation. So to get the amplitude of the fluctuation, or value for the, the fluctuation, you need to do now the, so you're doing, doing now an average over everything, and then you're doing a square root out of it to get this one greater. Yeah. So here, with them, then here, the mean value, so the RMS value should be something like this, where you first square it and then take the, to, to flip over, over all the functions over there, and then you're taking the, the average of it. The, the, the square root of it. So this one's going to be the root mean square of u. Right. For, for the example, for the sine function, that's going to be the, the uh, root mean square value is going to be then approximately 0 0.7. <coughs> So and that gives you then somewhat uh, a value for the for the fluctuating part. So the uh, root mean square value, or also called the RMS value, of uh, of uh, a fluctuating part. So with that, you have already two important parts. You have the mean value, which gives you the, the mean velocity field, and the root mean square value, which gives you something about the um, amplitude uh, of the of the fluctuating part. But now we have a look at, uh, at a few more things.